Hey everybody, welcome back to Farm Boy 3117. My name's Jay, we're in the shop today, and I want to talk to y'all, the people who've never bought a car from a dealer. And of course my regular subscribers, uh, for, feel free to chime in down in the comments, you know, your, your thoughts on dealing with uh, unscrupulous dealers. And I wasn't even going to bring this up, but uh, as many of y'all know, if you've watched my other channel, I have recently bought a 2016 Wrangler. Love it, but I hated the whole experience with the dealer. Uh, this was the actually the second brand new vehicle I've bought uh, in my life. And I can tell you this was the worst experience that I've ever went through with a dealer. So I want to bring up a few points. I got my whiteboard right here. I'm going to be throwing some stuff up. Hopefully y'all can see it. Uh, of what to do if you are going to be buying a car. First, do your research. Know what the prices are, know what they're worth. On a high-end vehicle, you can just about always take 10% off MSRP and negotiate from there. Now, on a lower-end vehicle, there's probably not that much meat on the bone and they ain't going to come off that much on MSRP. Now, in my case, they had already come down and had it advertised for about two grand less than MSRP. So I knew what going in of what they wanted for the vehicle. Unfortunately, I didn't do my homework like I should have and knew the laws that protect consumers against uh, unscrupulous dealers. Now this was a big name, high volume Chrysler dealer in Metro Atlanta. Now, I'm not going to name any names. Well, let's just put it like that. It wasn't no mom and pop's little Chrysler dealership. They own several dealerships. All right, so, uh, you know, I noticed it on Auto Trader, and so I we went and looked at it, and it was just like what, you know, what I figured it was going to be. We test drove it. The salesman was real uh, knowledgeable, and, you know, he, I can't fault the salesperson. The person that I fought besides myself is the finance manager. Uh, when you walk in to a dealership, know you're going to be there at least two to three hours buying a vehicle. They want you there two or three hours because they won't wear you down. Have a price in mind before you sit down. Know, uh, know that you can get financed or have finance lined up ahead of time and go in there with your best price and be ready to get up and walk out if they're not going to be willing to meet it. And do not, under any circumstances, tell them how much you're willing to pay a month. That was another mistake that I made that I normally don't make, but I usually just go by price. But when they started out at 700 and something dollars a month, I was like, no way, Jose, I'm not paying that much a month for no Jeep. Well, it's all a tactic. I realize that now. So, where I made my mistake was I said I'll be willing to pay 600 a month and sign it. If I can drive out of here for 600 a month, I'm going to buy this Jeep. That was my first mistake. Well, that was actually my second mistake. The first mistake was I did not realize the Georgia law states that it is illegal for a dealer to advertise a, a vehicle for a price that does not include dock fees or dealer add-ons. They can advertise the price without tax, tag, and title. Well, so they had this Jeep advertised uh, for 33, 456. The MSRP was 35 something. I didn't know it at the time well, when we test drove the Jeep, but they had added on a lot of crap. You know, it's all marked up junk uh, that I wouldn't live without, personally. But they were wanting to add that into the 33, 456 they had advertised. All right, so first thing, know your rights, and that way you can call them on it. Second thing, don't go in there with a set monthly payment because they're going to dump everything they can, and they'll extend that, they'll extend it out as much as they can to get you that payment. But they're going to add everything they can in there. This is what happened to me. So we'll go sit down with the finance uh, manager 
and you know we're talking discussing stuff he never come out and said okay this year's sales price was 41 i mean uh, excuse me, th the what they had down for sales price was 34 one something which is about 700 dollars more than what they had advertised they charged an 800 dollar 800 dollar dock fee an 800 dollar dock fee if you can believe that I almost, I started, I got up. I should have walked out right then. $800 dock fee is just ridiculous. And I, I was just typing up the papers. That ain't for filing that. That's just typing up the papers. Well, that might be for filing the tag. There. Uh, but a lot of dealers don't even charge dock fees. You know, some charge two, three hundred dollars $300. So that was my second mistake, was agreeing to pay the $800 on top of the seven hundred dollars on top of the sales price. All right. My third mistake was not really understanding what they were putting on paper. Now they're gonna hand you a bunch of papers to sign before you ever get to the paper that you really need to to read and sign. But you need to read and sign all of them. Just wait. Do not sign any papers until you until you've agreed on the price. You've seen the. Uh, the uh, purchase agreement, the, the buyer's order, until you've seen the uh, truth and lending statement, do not sign anything. You're not bound by anything at that point. You can get up and walk out if you don't like it. So what, they, what that guy did was he said, well, I can't get you a $600 a month payment. It's going to be six years, uh, $699. And I said, no, I'm not going to pay that. He said, well, we can get uh, eight year, uh, seven years, maybe you got seven years for 613. I'm like, no. What? I said, what are you charging me for? And, I said, and, he's, and I, he showed me the paper, but you know, and I just scanned over. And I'm like, what's $39,000? And he never really came out and said, well, I've added in this $2,500 worth of, of, uh, of, uh, Extended maintenance agreement. I've added in twelve hundred dollars worth of maintenance, uh, you know, maintenance contract where they can come and get you oil change. You know, he never said any of that. So that was my second, my third mistake was not making him read line by line, uh, charge by charge, and just you know, kind of going with the flow. You know, I just went with the flow and. And I said, no, I can't do that. So I agreed to a higher down payment. And that was my fourth mistake, or my fifth. I lost count by now. All right, so the way he made it sound as he was coming up and finding me a lender and, and all this, that, oh, wait, I can get you this and that for the same monthly payment. So he was throwing that stuff in. He already had added it in to begin with, but he was making it sound like I was getting it for free because I didn't understand what he'd already put on the paper. And if I'd known that, I would have said, no, this, we're done, and I'd got up and walked. All right, so one of the papers they're gonna hand you, or may hand you, this was really the first time I ever got handed this paper to sign was a bailment agreement. A bailment agreement means that if you cannot secure financing then you have to bring the vehicle back and pay so much a day and so much for mileage and of course that hadn't happened to me but you know it could happen to somebody you go and trade in a vehicle you got kind of sketchy credit they want you to drive off that vehicle that day and there's no guarantee that when you come back you know, when they call you, say, on, you know, you go down on Saturday, buy a vehicle, and they say, okay, we'll, we'll get you financed. Don't worry about it. Just driving on home. And they call you about Tuesday or Wednesday and say, hey, we can't get finance for you. You're going to have to come on back down here and either put more down or, or uh, try to find a different lender or whatever. And you, you might say, well, I don't want to find a different lender. I want to just, here. Here, here, here's it back. Well, you're going to owe for so much per day and so much per mile. And then there's no guarantee that they're going to have your trade still there. They may have already sold that joker. 
So uh, be careful with that. Make sure you have financing in hand before you leave that dealership. And it's going to be on that truth and lending statement. There should be a lender name, how much your payments are going to be per month, how many months total, and all that stuff. Now, that being said, do not fall in love with a vehicle. Now, that's the worst mistake you can make. Agree on what you can afford before you go in there. Make them sit there and go over line by line, charge by charge, before you sign any kind of, uh, of a buyer order or uh, truth and lending state. Yeah. No, they're gonna run your credit. If you got if you got sketchy credit, you know you you probably gonna end up with either a high interest rate, or you're gonna have to have more down, or you're gonna have uh, you know uh, you're gonna have problems getting financing. So what they recommend is getting financing ahead of time. Go you if you're a member of the credit union or a bank, go to the bank, see if you can get financed. Go to the credit union, that's the best place. I have never, and I've bought many vehicles from dealers, just two new ones, but many used ones. I have never ever secured financing prior to walking into a dealership and I've never ever had problems getting financed with a decent interest rate until now. All right. So a brand new Jeep, get this, 5.1% because the price is so much more, the, the, the amount financed was so much more higher than MSRP because they added in all that junk crap that I didn't even want. Now, it's too late now for me, I can't get my money back on that stuff. Uh, the best thing that would ever happen to me is if the lending fell through and I had to take the Jeep back and I could just tell them to kiss my butt and, and walk on and find me another Jeep somewhere. And I would, I'd get me another Jeep if, I, if that happened. I wouldn't get it from them. But, uh, yeah, you can kind of tell I'm a little bit ill. I'm a little bit mad. I, I'll stewed over it for about a week and I debated on it. I wasn't gonna make this video because I'm, I'm kind of ashamed I let myself get into that situation. But if it helps one person save their, themselves from this kind of pitfall, then it'd be worth making this video. So I'm imploring anybody that has never dealt with a dealer. They might, they might be the greatest dealer on earth, they might be the crackiest dealer on earth. You never know until you walk in there and deal with them. Uh, back in January, I bought a used Suburban from a local dealer here in town. And, you know, it, it still took two or three hours but I tell you what, they had no dock fees, they wouldn't no added bull crap. It was just bam, bam, no problem, got a good interest rate, walked out the door happy. And uh, I wish I'd went back, they had a used Jeep on the lot, I wish I'd went back and got that. But anyway, that's here, neither here nor there. A little late now for uh, hindsight 2020 and all that good stuff. But anyway, so here's the points I want to make. One, do your research. Have a plan in mind, have a price in mind, go in there, be firm. If you're willing to give a little, to get a little, you can do that, but don't give a lot to get a little, okay? Because there's more Jeep, there's more cars, there's more trucks, there's more dealers. You can go one, go the other. I would ask them, first of all, how much of your dock fee is it included in the sales price? And if their dock fee's over about 300 bucks, I just walk out and go somewhere else because that's just ridiculous. Number two, uh, do not tell them how much you're willing to pay a month. Do not tell them. Do not tell them. That's the worst thing. If they ask you how much you're willing to pay a month, just get up and walk out. Tell them it ain't none of their damn business. All right. Number three, Make them go over line by line, step by step, charge by charge, and make sure you agree to what they're putting on there. If they start trying to sell you extended warranty and uh, all that stuff, you don't have to buy extended warranty at the dealership. You can buy that after you purchase the vehicle. You can buy it from an independent place if you want it. So don't make them think you've got to buy it right then or you can't get it. That's false. 
And last is be ready to walk out at any time. Do not sign any papers until you see the truth and lending statement, until you see the buyer's agreement and the truth and lending statement. Do not sign any other paper. They're going to throw all these papers in front of you, and those, those are going to be the last two. If they want to make a big deal about, you know, oh, you got to sign this, and then you can sign that, just stack them up. Just put them in front of you, stack them up, and say, we'll sign all these when, the, when we get the deal done. And that way, you're not beholden to anything until you sign the, really those last two, those, uh, the buyer order and the truth and lending statement. Once you sign that, you're done. Uh, you bought it. So remember that. So anyway, hope this helps. Uh, if, you're, if you've never bought one, or maybe if you have bought one and had good luck. You know I mean, like I say, I bought a bunch, and this was the first time I've ever really gotten, felt like I've been screwed. But uh, anyway, if you have a, a story you want to share about, you know, a dealership or somewhere you bought something and felt like you got screwed, how they screwed you and all that, go ahead and stick it down here in the comments. I'm sure other people are going to read these comments. and uh, The more you know, the more power you have. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you have. Oh, and check out Farm Boys Garage.